and you're not in my shoes on how I feel, I think, oh, it's not really Can I try your thing. shoes on? What? Five minutes. Just give it five minutes. I know she's overbearing. It's, you know, the whole wife swap thing, but like, give it five minutes without doing a bit. You can do it. Everyone is different. In our society, we all have vastly different backgrounds and unique perspectives that shape the way we go about our everyday lives. Some very, very different than others. We are very conservative with water because we realize it's such a precious commodity. We'll bathe twice during a week. But regardless of how you choose to live, the only guarantees in life are death, taxes, and wife swap finding a family that is the complete opposite of yours in every single way that will challenge you in every conceivable way possible. And it makes great entertainment, which is why today we're going to be taking another look at ABC's Wife Swap. But the episode we're going to be watching today is a bit more mild than the last one, I'll say. I'm not going to do away. that. I am classier Spit than that. Me. I Spit would never. Santa Claus. But it's still going to be a hoot. And the episode in question is the Galvin and Martin Portola families. God, I'm so sick of these two name names. And of course, both families will be a bit much in their own ways, but there will always be one family that is more the extreme than the other. Usually the bad guys or the bad wife. Even though whatever the deal is with the wives, they usually bleed into the family somehow, so it usually becomes a family and family thing, not just one wife is bad, one wife is bad. This week, the Martin Portales from Ohio are here to mystify and amaze you. This whole family is devoted to magic. Easygoing mom Melissa manages mind-boggling magician husband Andy. You guys have heard me say multiple times that I would do anything to get the raw footage of Exhibit on Pimp My Ride walking to each different spot in those transitions, like without any editing or any music. But I think just as, if not more funny, would be the raw shots of these families just fucking smiling for a long time. I want the raw take of this, audio and all. I wanna hear fucking birds chirping, lawnmowers going off in the distance. I need it raw. Disregard the last part of that sentence. Astounding 10 year old Eli loves magic so much he started performing at 18 months. The kids are even pulled out of school for magic shows. Was there no one in that crew that could have just like had that girl try a different smile. Anything else? My husband Andrew, he's a magician. We eat and sleep and breathe magic. Yeah! In our business, I handle all of the marketing, the phone calls. He just has to go out and do the shows. Cleaning is the lowest priority. It's just, oh. <laughs> he's always goofing around, he's always trying to be funny, he's always trying to see if he can make me laugh. This is gonna be a common theme through the episode, but like, I cannot imagine how exhausting it would be having to deal with this man and his countless bits. It does not get a rest. Get me the coffee. Kind of hard for me to be serious. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. That was, that was a good one. <laughs> Wait, did when I asked for coffee, did you just walk upstairs, pretend to brew coffee, stand up there for the amount of time it would have taken to brew coffee? and then just come downstairs to do that bit. Is there any coffee upstairs at all? I like my kids to be free. I don't want them to be constrained. He'll go up to anybody and, oh, hi, how you doing? Hi, what's your name? Watch very closely, but not too closely. <laughs> Imagine you're just driving down your street and you see this kid coming up to you and you think, oh, maybe he's in danger or he needs something. And then you just get sucked into a bit. Like you want to drive away, but if you fucking live four houses down, so like at some point it's gonna come up that you just drove away from this kid and it's gonna be a whole thing. But Melissa is about to abandon her fun-loving magical family to swap lives with a woman she's never met 1,800 miles away in California. <laughs> now it's time to see what family wife swap has conjured up in their laps to fundamentally challenge everything this family stands for. The FBI, CIA, NSA, all of those databases combined do not have the database that wife swap has. They could just look at any family in the US and then they could find some other family, run a thousand simulations and be like, yeah, they'd kill each other. And then boom, they've got a wife swap episode. On an orderly street of orderly homes and cell block Galvin, the inmates have been sentenced to life. Elena. A life of serious hard labor. There is not time to have fun in this house because things always have to be perfect. What's up? No one can clean as well as I can. If you watched my last wife swap video, I want to make it very clear that I did not intentionally pick another episode where one of the wives has this haircut. I just think every other wife swap episode has this haircut. It was just very popular in the mid 2000s. I have special timers on their toothbrush to make sure that I know that they've brushed for two minutes. Homework is done immediately. They want me to be successful in life so I can pay them back for everything that they did for me. Pay them back for what? The toothbrushes? At this point, it doesn't look like they've done anything for them at all. Like, unless they want them to pay them back for 
the mortgage. Jennifer spends no quality time with nine-year-old Elena, who lives a solitary life. I wish I could spend more time with my dad because he's always playing the video games with my brother and then I just get left out. Can I play? No. Okay, one, that's really sad. And two, on top of that, it looks like they planned out this bit and everything. And they were just like, okay, so we're going to have you and your son playing games, you know, bonding like you normally do. And your daughter that you neglect is just going to come up and she's going to say like, hey, can I, can I play? And you're going to be like, no, not now. Oh, well, and you put it like that, it kind of sounds like a neglector. Maybe I, maybe I should spend some more time. And action. The last time I got to play with my mom was when I was little. Why were you playing outside in the new clothes that I just bought you? Don't do that again. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Damn. This sucks. After an 1800 mile journey, the wives finally get to see where they'll be living for the next two weeks. The house looks a little small. I'm concerned on what the inside is going to look like. There's all this magic stuff. Oh my gosh, these people are magicians. A real detective on our hands, I see. Very, how'd you figure that one out? <laughs> Knowing what we do about how little they clean, as well as how many things in that basement have been in Andy's mouth, it has got to smell awful down there. But you know something that doesn't smell awful, though? The sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. That's right, guys. Scentbird is once again sponsoring the channel, helping to make these videos possible because, you know, copyright stinks. But Scentbird doesn't, which is why I use it. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service helping to empower each and every person to express themselves through their own unique scent. Because the last thing you want to be is some schmuck that wears the same three scents as everyone else. That's not cool, and you will be made fun of by me. I personally try to find the most unique scent that I can, not just because it often smells great, but I want to stand out. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17. Every month you get to pick what you want sent to you, so there's no surprises. And what's great about Scentbird is it's not just for men. They offer a wide array of unisex options, and with each fragrance you get 30-day supply, so you can try fragrances without committing to a full bottle, many of which can often cost over $150, sometimes even reaching $500. Yikes! And of course, Scentbird carries a ton of popular options like Prada, Gucci, Versace, and many more. And to help find your own unique fragrance, Scentbird also lets you take a personal quiz to help you narrow down the one that's right for you. Here's the ones that were sent to me this month. I got Marta May, Kinetic, and Ormande Man, with my personal favorite being Ormande Man because, well, I'm a man, but also I like lighter and more fresh scents, which this is perfect, as well as it's not something that I'm used to smelling, which is great. So if you want to smell your best and stand out, head on over to Scentbird.com and use my code ChrisJames2 so you can get 55% off your first month. That's a little over $7. That's it. So go check out that link in my description. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring and back to the video. For the first week, the wives must live by the rules of their new family. Each wife has written a manual as a guide to the running of their homes. My children don't have chores. They're not my maids. I brought this up in my last video, but from my limited research, always limited, the only things that seem to be fabricated on this show is anything written down on paper, whether it be the rules or whatever the wives left behind for the new ones to read. For example, that line about my children are not my maids. You know they wrote that shit in there because it's gonna rile up Jennifer because she thinks her children are her maids. You guys beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Wow. <laughs> They've succeeded in looking extremely good. All three of them are very beautiful people. She's pretty plain, doesn't take care of herself. Yeah, they're a very tidy family, very clean and well put together. <sighs> she is beat. You can't have oh, the shoes wow. on in the house. I didn't even oh. recognize that. Yes, wow. I'm so I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't tell Jennifer! Okay. I love how she's like not even done with her sentence yet and that kid's already yanking her fucking shoes off. <laughs> shoes off in the house, lady. Oh, okay, uh, you could have just asked. I can take them off my fucking self. In California, there's no time for fun as Melissa has to immediately oversee the kids' chores. Get in the middle. Right in there. So it kind of seems like you and Elena do just about everything. How does this make you guys feel? It makes me feel like a prisoner sometimes. I've never seen a pair of kids work as hard as you two. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So much. Oh, uh, you're, you're welcome? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, no, you don't have to, don't. God damn it. In California, Melissa, who gave up her job to support her husband and be with her kids, must take on Jennifer's busy wedding event coordinating job. Come here and I'll show you how to answer the phones. I get why they do this whole like making them do each other's jobs thing for the show, but like seriously though, imagine you're planning your wedding, arguably the most important night of your life, and then they're just like, hey, so you know uh, your wedding coordinator, the one that you picked out of like a whole bunch of other ones, the one that you specifically chose to like make this night go perfectly, she's doing a wife swap. 
Uh, we didn't really coordinate the schedules that well. Uh, so we're just going to bring in someone who has never done this before and has no experience whatsoever. So should go fine. Let us know if you need anything. Jennifer must spend the day working from home on the Martin Portala's magic business while Andy studies. Here's your coffee, my love. Oh! All right, dude, get a new fucking move. My goal is to make as much money as I can, and doing something with magic seems way down here. I can name a lot of people extremely happy. But I mean, doing. how many are successful, and they how many are, success are really they rich are from doing it? And of course, because this is wife swap, there cannot be any middle ground, just one way or the other. The bad guy wife has to be like, no, you, you can't, can't be happy, just success. Well, could, being rich is not being successful. We have to work. We live in the real world of working. While it would annoy the living shit out of me if I was having a serious conversation with this man and he was doing this, nothing is funnier than the image of him blowing up a balloon mid-conversation. <laughs> At the Galvins, Richard and Ricky are hanging out together while Elena does her homework alone and Melissa must watch TV. I love the shot of her having to just be miserable by watching TV. Does your mom spend time with you when you do your homework? No. My mom just usually watches TV and go does her own thing. Really? Yes. What about one thing that you want to do with your mom? Play. I try not to think too seriously about these shows, often because they're either too stupid or I don't want to waste my mental health doing that, but if they don't, by the end of the show, play with this girl, Give her some time of day. Love her. Give her a fucking hug. I will be pissed. At the Martin Portales, Jennifer discovers just how much freedom Eli and Emma have. You're going too fast. What's that mean? I gotta give you a ticket. Oh, okay. God, this kid is just a non-consensual walking lemonade stand that is just meant to waste your fucking time. <laughs> I would rather have 17 speed bumps on my street than live on the same one as this kid. Like, imagine a child abductor just rolling through this neighborhood, and then this kid just starts fucking approaching him. At the Galvin's, chores done, the kids head off to bed, and Richard's back from the gym. So the kids got everything done? Yep, got our chores done. Damn, this dude is jacked, and you wouldn't know it because he's just wearing the original pump cover, which is a giant 2000s dress shirt. Do you assign the kids certain responsibilities in the house? No, I haven't. You just don't want to do it, is basically what it is. You don't care. And you're teaching them to not care. <laughs> you're really making my mind just go I want to do a balloon that represents how I feel. He just starts spelling out bitch with the balloon. <laughs> this is what Jennifer's doing. She's opening up my eyes and an opening up my heart. <laughs> I can't. Sometimes these cameramen and the choices they make are the funniest parts about this show. Like the way they just pan down to that balloon and it's so sad. So tell me what you're feeling. <sighs> Why don't you tell me what you're feeling right now? I can't. I'm all out of fucking balloons. Those are my last ones. Today, everything is about to change in the Galvin and Martin Portala households as the new wives take control. Now it is finally time for chaos to ensue as the wives inflict their own rules upon the families. Galvin family, you're all a bunch of prisoners in a no-fun zone. Portalas, you think your life is all fun and magic while you're living an illusion. Yep, you can still tell the producers wrote this shit too. It is too perfect and too scripted for the scenarios not to be. All things magic will be locked in the pit and the pit will be padlocked. I can magically uh, make the padlock disappear. Here. Yeah, and I'm gonna magically continue to talk. Damn, that was good. Andrew, your career is a magical joke. No, I do these this are, for a living. These no, are, I do this for a living. I have found you a respectable job that will put your skills with people to good use. It's time. I support my family. I, I've done everything yeah. that Melissa's done, so no, it's time not to really. listen to you me. You haven't really done what Melissa has done. Like I said, she's the bad guy wife. Of course, they always have to have one be worse than the other, even though they're both like maybe could use a little bit of uh, fine tuning. Like, of course, the other wife, they should maybe clean up a little bit more and maybe not have their son just approach every car that like drives past their house. But then this lady is just going in on this man's profession. Like, yeah, this guy, maybe he needs to like cool it with the bits, but if he's making money and doing his thing, 
so what? But I know she would have given me the same spiel if like I was that husband sitting on that couch and she found out what I do for a living. <laughs> so your kids will not miss school anymore and they will come home. It's homework first. You're leading them down a dangerous path. No, I don't. I made Dad. a preemptive strike with my son by enrolling him in a program that showed him dangers of bad decisions. Is it so hard for you to hear the truth? These are real things that are going on yeah. and happening. No, they're... And you're not liking oh. that. No, it's not. Go ahead and run and put your act first like you always do. Oh, shut up. Gotta get out of this fucking prison. I gotta do some magic. I like how he didn't bring his kids. He's just like, you, you'll be fine. He didn't think like, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's get out of here as a family and leave this lady. While at home, Jennifer locks away anything magical. Jennifer took all the fun out of the house and packed it up. And erects a fence to stop the kids from roaming the neighborhood. I just wanted you to know that I could fit through the holes in case they get mad. Mm -hmm. So I will get mad. I think that's the first time I've heard this girl talk yet. And when she says, I'm gonna get mad, I believe it's solely based off of the first time I saw her face. Back at the other house, we see what Melissa's first course of action is messing up their dad's bed, which they look like they're having a blast, but not really. At least not for the son, because he sneaks back in and makes his dad's fucking bed. Look at your son! That was your son, Ricky! Uh, that wasn't me. No, come on, that's my dad's bed! This is where you can really see where at least the son is like, so programmed by their clean freak mom. Sure. For me being taken out of what I'm used to, I felt like I handled it really well. Sure. And you're not in my shoes on how I feel. I think, oh, it's not really Can I try your thing. shoes on? What? <laughs> I'm just emotionally exhausted by Andrew. I'm really trying to be serious. I really yeah. am. Yeah. Five minutes. Just give it five minutes. I know she's overbearing. It's, you know, the whole wife swap thing, but like, give it five minutes without doing a bit. You can do it. Thank you, Joe. I like the way Jennifer did my hair. In California, Melissa has ruled the whole family spent time with Elena, painting a backdrop for their upcoming magic show. Taking a step back, this is just insane. Like, you have one house where Jennifer's, like, imposing her reign on the family, making them clean nonstop, doing their timer toothbrushes and all that shit, making it feel like a prison, and then you switch back to the other house, and they just have to spend more time with Elena. Like, that's their whole thing, is like, you gotta spend time with her and do something and make her feel loved. We cut back to the other household and Andy is applying for a job at a law firm, which goes exactly how you would imagine it would. <laughs> um, did you bring anything with you that gives me any indication of what your background is? Oh man, that's enough out of me. Okay. Well, I can't hire you for a job here, but I could use you for my daughter's birthday party. She's eight years old. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Willing yeah. to do that. I can do that, but you're not going to hire me. No. Thank well, thank you. you for your time. You can tell this guy's fucking annoyed that ABC made him do this shit. He's just like, look, I know I'm doing you guys a favor with this whole thing, but God, this is such a fucking waste of time. And I'm pretty sure he shook my hand with the taking shit out of his mouth hand. And so far, Richard has been resistant to her rule changes. But will he be able at last to let the kids stand on their own two feet? So one of the goals that Melissa wanted to set up for the kids was having them prepare to do a magic trick at the mall because Richard and Jennifer are very protective and don't often want them talking to strangers so this is a good way for them to do something fun and kind of loosen the chain that the parents have on the kids. I'm gonna put the toothpick in the middle and I want you to break that. Oh, okay. You sure you broke it? Yeah. I thought you said you broke it. <laughs> You didn't break it, that's for sure. Good job. Thank you. Oh my god, that's so cool. Wow. We get to be on TV, right? I mean, I'm always laughing at things. I mean, I'm really the jokative one of the family. I always make everybody laugh. After the success of the visit to the mall, Melissa has gained the confidence to confront Richard over the excessive amount of chores Jennifer enforces on her children. One observation I had is that, like, obviously Richard is fucking yoked, and because of that, you see him in almost every scene in this show, constantly eating. Even when others aren't eating, he's always eating. He's just gotta get his macros, though, and being someone ripped out of their fucking mind, I respect that. At the Martin Portales, Jennifer has been obsessively cleaning the house. But Andy, who hasn't told her he's failed at his job interview, is not heading for work. He instead breaks into the basement. What are you doing down here? Why aren't you at work? Well, you pinned me. But listen, lady, I'll strike you. Look, I don't know if that was just a bad pun or if you're about to assault me, but... You know what? Just smash my fucking skull in with that bowling pin, please. If you can just do that, 
that would be great. You know, I don't think it's fair that I'm up there cleaning your dirty bathroom and you're down here playing with your toys. <laughs> Since you're breaking my rule for the second time, we have a lot of work to do. As this episode goes on, I get more and more uncomfortable watching this man on screen. He is just the domesticated Joker. For the first time in five years, Elena has been spending time having fun with her whole family. Five years? What I've learned is to be more into what my kids want to do and focus in on just having fun with them and enjoying the moment. No, 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 Richard. Not your kids. Your fucking daughter. You play Halo 3 with your son every night. It's time to own up to the neglect of that poor fucking girl. I'm gonna call him and set up another interview. and Maybe I need to go down there with you. Like my mother? No, but obviously I need to hear what's going on. You're gonna try what I asked you to do. Where's the phone book at? Go put your suit on. Andrew, enough with the stuff. You have five minutes. Imagine you want to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with your dad. Talk about something serious, something that's bothering you. But you have to get through, like, five different card tricks, him pulling out ribbons, cards, and, like, seven other objects out of his mouth before you can get anything out of him. She was pushing me. She was pushing me down and down. And I just don't think it's right. What, what the hell's wrong with you? Why did you have to knock down that fence? It was a nice fence, it made the yard look nice. Even after she leaves, you can still have your kids playing out in the yard, playing out in the sidewalk, doing whatever. The fence isn't gonna stop that. You're immature, you're childish, and you're stupid. You're stupid. Thanks for wasting my time. Screw you, Andrew. And that is how you make the new life disappear. Yeah, this place is a mess. <laughs> He's gonna make another balloon, isn't he? <laughs> the happiest man in the world. What about his daughter, though? I'm pretty sure there was a shot of her saying she actually liked doing the chores, like they were fun for her. I like chores because they're fun. Maybe at the beginning they like saw how she was smiling in that first shot, and then her saying like "I'm gonna get mad," and they're like, "All right, maybe we should just let's not film her that much." The couples are about to be reunited. <laughs> so now it's the judgment time, where both wives are reunited with their spouses and then they both meet face to face for judgment. I was doing so much for you. And your response was, get your crap and leave then. I went out of my way cleaning. So what you And do? you disrespected you me. You used her as a service and then you kicked her out? Is that what it is? She's the one who left. Okay, Did somebody's telling you. With, with respect. Selling to, I, I I'm asking you a question. Yeah. You disrespect my wife? Richard looks like he's about to kick this guy's ass and like dangle him by his ankles and shake him till all of his magic shit falls out of his pockets. She um, called a company and had a fence pulled around the house. I took, uh, took the car and ran down the fence. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? Richard actually makes it sound like it was funny that he did that. He's like, oh, you actually did that? that that's, that's cool. It's very time consuming to clean things that are already clean. That was, an, that was an issue that I was going to talk to you about. The kids brought it to my attention that they were doing excessive chores in the morning. I didn't know about. In my extreme, of course I am. I know I've run this into the ground at this point, but like, the chores are one thing. Just spend some time with that girl. They are not focusing nearly as much time and energy as they should on that. I have the most hard working man. You're just awesome. Most of what I've seen from this show, it's rare that we make it this far into the judgment time. Like the piano is starting to play and everything. Usually people like storm out at this point. <laughs> Do you want to draw the dog? I've been spending a lot of time with Elena. Me and my mom play more. <laughs> She's yeah. turned into a so little So she kind of like, you know, kind of bloomed out there. And Thank fucking God. They did not speak one word of Elena not getting any love or attention in the judgment time. So I'm glad that they're actually doing something about it. I know you didn't get me a, a job at the law office, I but I understand somebody's birthday. Yeah, right over there. Are you guys ready to have a great time? Yeah! Okay. We are still. Wait, hold on. Holy shit, is that me? That is exactly what I looked like at that age. In the mid 2000s, dude. That might be me. <laughs> well, guys, it looks like a happy ending on both fronts. I'm actually quite relieved. That last wife swap episode we watched was hard to watch. I'll say that. But I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, like, comment, share with your friends. If you're new here, subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay up to date on all of my uploads. Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring. Don't forget to check out that link below. With all that being said, thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.